problem is if takes, it takes and queen takes h3 and there's some mating ideas. Wow, our opponent is really finding the good moves. <laughs> oh my god. It is episode 5 of the chess.com rapid rating climb. And the whole point is just to get as high of an elo as I possibly can. And we have the white pieces, so we'll start with e4 as normal. And let's see what kind of game we're going to get. I'm hoping for e5, so I can play a Vienna. God, I love the Vienna. I, it, this is an overused thing. And we get the Vienna Gambit variation. So I'll go over a bit more of the opening in depth in the post-game analysis. But for now... I'm just going to tell you that f4 is the move, and you're just going to have to believe me until I explain it later. But this pawn isn't capturable. You you, you can't take it. So d6 is a move. It's not the best move. d5 is the best move. But it's playable. So we're going to go knight f3, because we're just putting a lot of pressure on the e5 pawn. And we'd like my opponent to take on f4. And do you see the move here? What is the point? Why do we want him to take? Well, the idea is that we trade off an f-pawn for an e-pawn, which allows us to go d4. Previously, this wasn't as good because our opponent could just take us. But now he can't because his e-pawn's been forced to the f-file. And our plan is to win the pawn back. Now our opponent's stubborn. He wants to hold on to the pawn. But he is also playing a second move of his knight. Because he's already developed it. And he's moving it again. It, and, and it's not really doing anything. It's just defending a pawn. So we're going to ignore him. We could bring the bishop to c4 or to d3. I think I prefer d4. Sorry, c4. Because d5 isn't playable, as we have way too much control over the d5 square, so we can stare at the f7 pawn. Bishop e6 is logical. We've got a few options. We can take and try and damage his pawn structure, but then he's going to get e5 after a move like knight f6, uh, c6 and shore up the defense of the f pawn. So d5 looks quite nice forcing the bishop to move, and also taking away the c6 square from the knight. So I think I'm going to play that. I think that's a logical move. Bishop g4, okay. He pins the knight, but not really worried about it. It is difficult to actually win this pawn back right now, though. We could play h3. But then something like takes, takes, queen h4. And the g3 square becomes incredibly weak. So I'm thinking of moves like knight to e2. But again, this might happen. So maybe we should castle kingside first, get the rook on the f-file, take away any checks on the e1 to h4 diagonal. And if he takes, then of course we take back, we attack the knight, and we're going to win this pawn. And I think knight e2 is on the cards now to... Try and go after f4 because if he takes we can take back with the rook and then we'd have three attackers on f4 so it should be quite easy to win it back now g5 is a move in a lot of positions so i am considering bringing my queen to d4 hmm. queen d4 looks nice but then bishop g7 and it's defended by the knight so it doesn't really work our opponent's doing a good job at the moment of holding on to his pawn and making it difficult for us to prove any kind of advantage. Now h3 looks tempting now. It does look tempting because the queen can't come in. Knight g3. Well, here knight g3, we just go up and exchange. But h3 takes takes knight g3 we can just play rookie one and play for e5 
So I think that's probably the way to go. And if our opponent retreats the bishop, he's going to cut off his knight's ability to develop. If he goes to c8, then his bishop's just back on its home square, and we're quite happy. So, yeah, bishop d7, okay. So this knight, if it wants to come to a6, that does look quite ugly. It really does. Now, again, it's not easy here. Because we still have to try and prove an advantage. Again, queen d4, bishop g7. This doesn't quite work. I would like to play... Come on. I'd like to play knight g5 and open up an attack on the knight. But then queen takes, defends the knight. So that doesn't work. Now, we could play knight d4. Opening up an attack, but then knight g3. And the rook is under fire. So e5 looks kind of logical to try and break open the center while our opponent's king is stranded and claim that knight g3 is ineffective because we want to move our rook to the e file anyway. So that's what I'm going to play. A lot of the time, when your king is safe, which it is, we can always go to h2 if we need. Then, and, and, and your opponent's king is stuck in the center, which it is. It's going to take a couple moves to castle queenside. And if knight a6 is played, we could probably just chop it off and ruin the pawn structure. And then play a move like queen d3. And to castle kingside, he's thrown his g-pawn forward. So he's, he's going to struggle to find safety, especially with this weak diagonal. So, our opponent's playing in like a typical King's Gambit style, like a sort of Morphe defense, which is what I tend to play against the King's Gambit when I used to play e5 on move 2. So, I do understand some of the themes here. Now, I feel like we have e6. e6 looks really nice. Takes, takes. Then we got moves like queen d3 to try and get to g6. We could play queen d3 straight away. It's possible. But then maybe he can take. So I think it makes sense to start with e6. Get this pawn right in our opponent's face. And queen d3 threatens queen g6. There's no good way for black to really stop me. Because it seems like no matter what he does, here, here, here is mate. This is a move, but then we have e7 with a discovered attack on the rook. And we're obviously forking these pieces. And if rook g8... Oh, he has queen f6. Yeah, that's true. It's a good move. Our opponent is finding good moves. Annoyingly. So, 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 so. This is not easy to break apart. You could argue we've actually closed the e-file off for ourselves by playing pawn to e6. But I'll have to live with that. Now, this looks like an okay move. But he also probably wants to take so we can put the knight on c6. So, I'm not really a fan. The problem is the development of this bishop is very difficult. So I might just bring it to e2 to move the knight and then go to c3 and try and skewer. I think that's quite logical. Again, d5 isn't playable because we have plenty of cover. Knight g3 is no problem because of rook e1. G4 isn't a problem, we just take it. And then knight g3, rook e1. And then the f4 pawn becomes way too weak. So, black has an extra pawn. 
but how he actually survives this position isn't easy. It's not easy. Now, it also isn't easy for us to prove an advantage, sure. But I think I'm finding some logical moves to try and do so. Again, it's incredibly difficult for this knight to develop. Because if it goes to a6, I think we just chop it. And then get in with the queen. Knight g3. Rook e1. I feel like this only helps us. Because the rook's better on e1 than it is on f1. Because f4 is too well protected. Oh, that's the idea. Okay. He wants to trade queens. We can't allow a trade of queens. Queen to d4 looks good. Now, queen d4, bishop takes f3. I think we take the rook. That is one issue. Because <laughs> this relieves defense of the knight. We don't really have a choice. Now, the problem is if takes take... If, um, takes... And takes and queen takes h3 and there's some mating ideas like this and it's not great okay so yeah he moves the rook that's good for us now i like this idea this looks tempting but i don't think it achieves anything e7 is a move attack and attack e7 might be winning Yeah, I think it's probably probably just a simple tactic. And although knight takes f3 looks scary, sorry, bishop takes f3 looks scary, because if we take queen h3, I think we can just ignore it. Wow, our opponent is really finding the good moves. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well... Huh. Do we go queen f2? Come on. Queen f2 d5. But then the bishop drops back. Okay. Now, we don't care if he takes, because then we get the bishop on the long diagonal. That's an ugly move. That's really ugly. Let's go, sorry, bishop d3. We want to look at the g3 square, g6 even. I'm expecting queen here. That does force a trade, but I think we might be winning. I think we might be. Oh wait, that's that's not a good move. We can promote. He had no choice though. Um Let's trade the queens first. Promote. Let's go. I think rook takes is better than bishop takes because we pin the knight to the rook. Make it very hard for black to get out. So, we're up a rook for two pawns. By the looks of it. Which is completely winning. Okay, now the bishop defends the rook. Let's attack the bishop. And make it so the bishop on g6 doesn't have to look after the rook anymore. So that he's free to move. I'm going to go rook e1 probably. This is also very tempting. Bishop e1. We're attacking the knight, and the knight has no escape as we cover everything. So he's going to be forced to trade with us, which is obviously to our advantage because we're up a rook. And we have rook d1 to get on the open file. And once this knight 
is captured. We also have the F5 square to harass the king further. He might just be getting mated. Let's start with this. No need to trade yet. I'm expecting bishop here. Don't think he really has another choice. But I think we... Wow. King e7. It's certainly a move. Okay, let's just trade. Let's just trade. We're going to trade everything. Because we're low on time and there's no increment. This forces a trade. Of some sort. Defend c2. Our knight covers the d4 square, which is nice. This cuts off the knight's escape. c1 is the only way out. Let's go here. The knight can go to b3. Probably should have played bishop back. Check. Gonna have to speed up here. I'm not used to playing under this much time pressure. Threatening this. Trade more pieces. Nice. This helps us massively. Now we need to get rid of the knight. Now we have 40 seconds, so I should be fine, but I'm not entirely confident in my blitz skills. Like to see, yeah, he's not. I wanted to see knight c4 so I could pin the knight to protect the pawn. This is now a move. Well, actually, was on the previous turn because if bishop b3, king f6, we had rook e6 check winning the knight. Bit of a miss. Okay, we're dominating the knight now. Knight has no movement because the bishop will take. Force that move. Let's go here. Want... Oh, oh, that makes it very easy. Okay, come on. Let's be quick. Let's be quick. Let's be quick. Um, let's win the queenside pawns. I think this is simplest. I'm expecting king e6, and then we're going to play rook takes g5. Nope, we're going to win this pawn then. Then we're going to win g5. Then we're going to win h4. Then we're going to win g3. Start pre-moving. Okay, I just want to get to this position. So I think it should be simple from there thinking um hikaru or something here nice and he resigns awesome right that was a very interesting game not easy whatsoever i'm going to see what the game review thinks it was 84 percent accuracy which is not bad. Not bad at all. So, the opening, I'm going to talk you through this a little bit. So, after knight f6, the reason the move is f4 is because black can't take. Unlike in a traditional king's gambit, because of the move e5, and the knight has no forward movement, because every square is cut off. So the knight's forced back to g8, and then it's important you play knight to f3. To stop queen to h4 check because if you play something like bishop c4 queen h4 
and g3 doesn't work because f takes and this hangs a rook now you can play king f1 and follow up with a move like knight f3 to kick the queen out and claim that you're better because you have very good development but i don't see a need to play in this manner i think it's far simpler just to develop the knight so the main move is d5 and the point is after f takes e5 there's knight takes e4 and i won't go into the intricacies of this because i've covered this in other videos but this is the main line now our opponent goes for d6 which is a fine move because if we take he just takes back and he's probably a bit better because we kind of lose a lot of play in the position so knight f3 and he takes of course he could defend his pawn with a move like knight c6 or even queen e7 but he opts to take and play it in a more king's gambit kind of style so d4 is the idea to open up the bishop's oh my god these arrows man open up the bishop's defense and knight h5 is actually the best move so let's see we played bishop c4 which is fine bishop e6 was computer wants us to take now i thought this would allow the move e5 once what g4 so if knight f6 we take and we give g4 up because of this okay and what on earth and if en passant then knight g5 Ah, and you need to play this move because if the knight retreats, the queen doesn't defend g5. And if en passant is played, then the bishop protects g5, so knight g5 is playable. That's ridiculous. There's no way I'm seeing that. So d5 is considered a miss as a result. Interesting. Bishop g4, we castle. g5. And it calls this a mistake. Now I wonder why. Knight f6. Now the thing to remember with a lot of these gambit style positions, especially in the king's gambit, is the computer will almost always favour the black pieces because they are up a pawn. But if you just look visually at the position, we have so much development. We're castled, we have a queen out, we have a knight out and a bishop out. Our king's very safe, we have a massive center, and our opponent has overextended king side pawns, a weak king, and only a single knight developed. A computer could win this with the black pieces, I'm sure, but a human is going to have to find some insanely accurate moves. So I, I, I'd prefer this with white any day. Bishop d7 is a mistake. e5. Computer wants rook e1 first, but e5 is the second choice. But the whole idea is e5, which, like I said before, you want to break open the center because the opponent's king is stranded. h6, and yeah, e6 is a great move, so I'm really happy I played that. And yeah, it's very difficult for black to play this position. Knight d4 is playable here. I played queen d3, and every move for black loses bar queen f6 which i missed um i think you could tell in the live game that i'd missed it but bishop d2 is best which i'm very happy about because i spent i think quite a while in this position because i wasn't really sure what i should be doing but yeah the point is the knight's going to go to d5 in most variations and then the bishop's going to take up the c3 square. So knight g3. Knight d5 is playable now. And if this... Then bishop c3. Queen e7. 
throw this check in first, and then take. And then you're going to win this rook too. Hmm. That's cool. I didn't notice that. I just played rookie one because, you know, it's logical. But then it allows queen f5. So the point is, the point is, f5 isn't playable. Uh, queen f5 isn't playable if knight d5 first. Because if you go here, then you have knight takes c7. Whereas the way I did it, I wasted a move with rook fe1. So queen f5, if I now try knight d5, then my opponent can just trade with me. And c6, maybe knight c6, and I don't have enough. So yeah, I just lose a move with rook e1, because the knight needs to defend the queen anyway. So that's interesting. This is why you analyze with a computer. But I missed it. Queen d4 is best here. Force the rook to move. e7, cool. And I'm not as winning as I thought. Queen f2 is a good move. Rook h8, bishop d3, and then queen c5 is the mistake. So our opponent has to play queen f7 to cover the g6 square, because obviously we saw what happened when I managed to get queen, uh, bishop g6 in. What? This? Knight h4, threatening bishop g6 with a pin on the queen. That's mental. That is crazy. Other than bishop takes f4, I can just continue developing. We've like rook d1. But this is very difficult for black to play, because he can't get rid of this pawn easily. And even if he does manage to take it, then he's just opening his king up. And the pawn on e7 stops the king from castling either way, because it takes up the d8 and f8 squares. So, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Queen c5 is logical, but yeah, it just blunders bishop g6. Takes, takes, promote. And here I had low time, but the conversion, our opponent kind of made it easy. So... I, I, I first take with the rook so that I can force a trade of rooks when the knight moves. Bishop e1 forces a trade of knights here as well. Because I'm low on time, so I need to try and trade as many pieces as possible. Which I do. And knight d5 forces a trade because I'm forking the king and bishop. So he kind of has to take me. Here... The knight comes in and wins a pawn, but it's not the end of the world. Move the king. Rookie two. Here again, just attacking the knight. And I'm surprised our opponent took. Now we are threatening knight d7, forking the king and the bishop. I call it a threat, not because we're going to win material, but because we're going to trade. And our opponent can't allow us to trade, because then we're going to be up a rook, which is what eventually happens. But he takes and makes life easy for us. Yeah, we did have bishop b3 check here. And the point is that the king has to retreat to g7 or f8. So if it steps forward, then we win the knight. So that would have been a nice in-between move. But bishop b3 all the same. Here, this is a classic domination of the knight by the bishop. So c6 is kind of forced to make the bishop move. And give the knight what I thought would be the b7 square. But he instead chooses to let me trade with him. And here, I'm low on time, but this is very easy to convert. Just go and win all the queenside pawns. And then I, I mean, like I did in the game, I can literally just pre-move basically all of this. Because as long as I can keep the king stranded on the h-file... And I can keep it under control in terms of how far it can come down the board. Then I really don't need to do any thinking. I just need to push the king. Push the rook and the pawns. And as you saw in the game. I pre-moved rook h6. 
and then here I wanted to actually think so that I could see what the king was going to do and then I can continue to push like this and make him on the back rank or if he tries to run away I can promote to a queen and then I can just ladder mate him because even though it might not be the most efficient way to do it, it takes no thinking and I can pre-move half of it. And because I'm on low time with no increment, I need to do that. So that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'm enjoying getting this rapid rating up because it boosts my ego, obviously. Um, so I hope that was instructive. And if you are a Kings Gambit or a Vienna player, this video would, will be very useful. And if you play against the Kings Gambit or Vienna, our opponent played very well up until a point or a couple of points where he made mistakes. But, you know, no one plays perfectly. No one's a computer, not even the best players in the world. So just play chess, man. Just play chess how you think poses problems to your opponent. And eventually they're going to slip up.